one of the prompts for this project was a dream that I had where having thought about the idea of going over the edge in the dream I literally did and there was this extraordinary sensation of kind of both falling and flying at the same time and you know you could think of that in terms of death um, you could think about it in terms of um, a kind of almost like an ecstasy, it's almost kind of orgasmic, but this sort of sense of a kind of um, almost stepping beyond yourself, which for me, I think I continue to associate with water and particularly with the sea. Now we're at a point where we are starting to kind of open up that environment and it's becoming politicised, it's becoming subject of sort of different economic interests. And I think, therefore, that sort of question of how we think about that space takes on a very particular significance. One thing I then became interested in was the extent to which the mapping of the deep seabed is done using sonar and the whole question of it being an environment we couldn't see and yet we were finding ways to represent it. And the sense in which, although science is a very kind of rigorous discipline based in quantifiable data, that there was a kind of slippage there between what was, what was gathered as data and what was imagined and how those two things informed the imagery that was then created. So I contacted uh, a number of oceanographers, one of whom was Dr Tim Labar, who worked at the National Oceanography Centre in Southampton. He responded to my email and said, well, yes, I've often wondered what it means for me to create images of a space I can't see. So that's how the dialogue began. In terms of the staff at the NOC, I think it's very important to say how generous everybody there was towards me in a whole range of ways. They have a very powerful emotional and imaginative relationship to the sea themselves. And people said things to me about their experiences and things that being at sea had made them think about that they would never write in a report or would never come into a scientific paper and yet actually are constantly informing what they do. So hopefully there will be more sense of those awarenesses as having a place. because it's dark, you can't go down there without breathing equipment, the effects of pressure are extraordinary. There was a sense of it at, at being this very kind of different environment. It's not just about a literal sense of we can't see it, but more that we, the way in which we might look at it using cameras and microscopes and the sort of conventional technologies of it, sort of investigation, have a limit and that we, we almost have to see it with our mind's eye as much as we see it literally. Trying to create a relationship with that space that isn't about dis observing it from a distance, it isn't about kind of separating ourselves out from it, which is the kind of classical way post-enlightenment which we've approached nature. A lot of the works in the exhibition try Whilst they don't necessarily invite you to touch them directly, they try to evoke a sense of touch or a sense of trying to understand that environment almost through the body. The last element is picking up on the darkness, that the kind of motif of blindness, which works in parallel with the engagement with touch. So in one of the videos, there's a blind performer who reads a text and there are other works where you have plaster reliefs and there's a sense I think you almost read those as a kind of braille map. I could probably go on and do another project about the deep sea but it's almost become a habit as soon as I've kind of got to point of you know some sort of almost expertise in an area to so say okay now I want to go somewhere else because otherwise it becomes you know, it's a danger of repetition and becoming formulaic. It's something about filtering all this through me learning, me experiencing things, which I think comes back into the work that feels really important.